Thomas Halleck here, University of South Florida, St. Petersburg. Today's three-minute lesson from A Road Course of American Literature is on the sovereignty and goodness of God, otherwise known as the captivity of Mrs. Mary Rowlandson. Rowlandson was held captive from February to May 1676 during King Philip or Metacom's War in Massachusetts. Her account which became a classic example of the women's captivity narrative, was issued with a preface and running editorial commentary by the minister Increase Mather. Her story provides an exemplum of how God works through our hands, which means, of course, she is piecing together experience and conjecture. That calls upon our skills as careful readers. And one of the things that I like to ask students to do is create a timeline of a specific or important scene in Rowlandson's account. So what I'd like you to do right now is take out a sheet of paper and give me an X axis and a Y axis going across and then going up and over to indicate the shifts in time and then also place or perspective in the account. While you guys do your timeline, I will, pull up the, um, I will pull up the text, and what I would like you to do is press pause and then come back when you're ready. So notice how it starts with the here and now. Now has that dreadful hour come, as I have often heard it, now, here and there. But if you notice, there's a kind of backtracking in time of war. Immediately, there's a search for perspective, but we move again to the now. I think that word appears three or four or five times in this passage. We're gonna move forward again. Now we might hear and see mothers crying out. Then we're moving forward. But if you notice just a few sentences down, she's gonna backtrack. She's talking about the dogs. Um, being outside, uh, being around, and how the dogs would have been kind of the doorbell, just as dogs were then, they are now. They let you know when someone is coming, though at another time. So we are going back in space, even though we would be presumably in that moment. Again, we come back to the perspective, the more we acknowledge his hand. So we leave the immediacy, and now we are speaking for what God says. Once we've established that, we come back to the here and now, but we, we go out of the house, had his leg broken. Yet here we also reach one of the first crises in here. Rowlandson has gone outside, but she's reporting upon what happened in her bro to her brother. Bullets flying all over the place, chaos, how do you know? That leads to an even more problematic scene where she tells the story of her sister. She, her sister is about to die, and she goes back 20 years. She lay under much trouble on spiritual account where I have the double arrow, and then it pleases God, so it moves forward a little bit in this religious conversion, and then more than 20 years after, towards the bottom again. Finally, we get to the but to return, taking us again to the specific point. So, What's in this? I would like in courses in early American literature for you to read very, very careful, really. Read like a cross examiner, read like a police officer, read like your life depends upon it and you can't trust anything. Look for the jumps, look for the shifts in perspective, look for the elisions, look for the gaps in time. And these are skills that will serve you very well in life. Thank you.